Welcome back everyone to another episode. Today we are introducing our dogs to the tracking box. I learned the tracking box at the Tom Rose School. For those of you who are not familiar with what that is, it is a school that I went to to become a certified professional and master dog trainer. Stick around till the end of the video today because Tom Rose himself watched the video, critiqued it, and added a couple notes that I think is going to be incredibly valuable for those of you that want to become exceptional trackers. Let's get started. Today we're gonna to be teaching our dogs what's known as a tracking box. This is something that Tom Rose teaches at his school for professional dog trainers. In fact, there was a student that came up with a concept and it was so effective with the dogs that he continued to teach it every class after that. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be jumping into a location and we're gonna put the flags down. This is going to help us indicate where the box is. Now, when you're making this box, it should be about one and a half times the size of your dog. So if your dog is in length, let's say two and a half feet, then you wanna make it roughly three and a half feet, give or take. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the location and then I'm gonna put the flags down and I'm gonna lay food inside of that square where I step on the grass. This is going to show our dogs that they're going to be able to find reward where there's crushed vegetation and the smell of the human, whatever odor we leave behind. So I'm gonna demonstrate as I do this. So you wanna make sure you jump in so you don't affect any of the grass around the tracking box. So I jump in right there, good, excellent. And then I'm gonna take a flag and I'm gonna put it in one corner and I'm gonna stomp and make the next corner. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. And then we wanna step every location inside of the tracking box. Once we complete that, we're gonna take our dog's food or treats, whatever it is that we're using, and we're gonna fill the, the tracking box with the food. Now, when you do this, you have to make sure that the food doesn't leave the tracking box. It has to stay on the inside. The dog has to make a connection with the crushed vegetation and the smell that we leave behind when we're stepping and the food. So no food where we did not step, food where we stepped. So I get nice and low and I set the food in and I make sure it's in the location where I was stepping. And doing our best not to step outside of the box. Okay, once you completed that, you want to jump back out of the box and then you're going to bring your dog. Now, if it's the first time you're doing this and it's a small dog that you could pick up and hold, then you'll take the dog and actually step in with them, set the dog down and allow them to start searching for the food. Now, since I'm doing this with my dog Ari, she's a little bit bigger and it'd be harder for me to carry her in. So I'm just gonna let her walk inside and start working on her own. And you're gonna notice when she leaves the tracking box, she'll notice that there is a change in the smell and there's no longer any rewards. And that's gonna get her to turn back and go back into the tracking box to continue searching for the rewards. And you would wanna continue doing the tracking box up until a point where you bring your dog out and they see those flags and they already know what's going on. And they go to the flag and they start working within that tracking box. That would lead us to our next step when we start doing straight lines. So let's grab Ari and get her inside of the box. Now we have Ari and I'm going to allow her to go into the tracking box and start working. Come on Ari. I'm gonna send her in. There she goes. Now she's starting to notice that there's food. So I'm using a flexi line because I want her to pull towards the actual tracking box in order to start searching for the food. And we're gonna see how she does with this. And I've only done a tracking box with her one time when she was a puppy. And I haven't done it since then. So this is the first time as an adult dog that she's done the tracking box. I like to keep the dog either on a harness or an agitation collar, giving them the opportunity to pull in order to get the rewards. And again, the main idea behind this exercise is that your dog learns that 
they can find rewards where the odor is different because of that crushed vegetation and the odor that we leave behind from stepping in that area. And that's gonna help when we transfer them to the actual tracks that we're going to be doing. Now, a lot of dogs will stand up and search. Ari is a little bit unique and she likes to lay down apparently while she's searching, but that's fine. And this tracking box is actually a little bit too small. So now she's leaving the box. Notice she came back and that's what we want to see. She left the box. She noticed that the odor was different and there was no longer any rewards. And that's what got her to turn right back around into the tracking box. And again, that is the idea of this exercise. So now she's left the box again. No food and she goes back. Come on, Ari. Good job. As you can see, this is a very simple exercise. Like I said, if you're starting with a young puppy, then step into the tracking box with them and set them down and kind of help them out a little bit. And as they become more confident in the exercise and they get to the point where they're, they're seeing the flags and they know what's going on and they're pulling and trying to get to the tracking box, then you could do how I did with Ari where you're outside of the tracking box. And as your dog gets even better, you can start adding a little bit of tension on the harness because when they're tracking, we want them to pull and lead us through the track, depending on which sport you're doing. So if you're doing it for IGP, Schutzen, or AKC tracking, just make sure you double check the rules and that you're following the proper procedures that they have lined out in the rule book. So that's going to be very important. Each one's going to be slightly different. So again, if you're competing, just make sure you're following the rules of that specific sport. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Those that are interested in tracking, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again. Nathan's explanation of the tracking is very good and accurate. A few minor things I might like to point out. Before we start a puppy or even a grown dog on the tracking box, we teach what is called a finger point. It's described in my book, Training Dogs with the Touch. What this amounts to is if I point in a direction, the dog needs to learn that I'm pointing and he needs to follow that point. And if he does, He'll get a piece of food. So we generally do that for a few days before starting on the tracking box. Next step with the tracking box is to place food on the tracking box as Nathan mentioned. However, if you use small kibble, it's going to fall inside the grass and be very difficult for the dog to dig out. Instead, we recommend using hot dogs cut up into nickel sized pieces. That way we can use the finger point to point out the food and get the puppy started. And once the dog begins to understand what he's looking for and that there is food in there, he can visually find the food. And then as he works the, bog, the box further, this food will fall between the grass and he's gonna to have to use his nose. Also, we begin standing inside the box with the dog as opposed to sending the dog from a lead's length away from the box to go on and start working. If we're inside the box, especially with a puppy, we carry the puppy in and then we can point out the food much more easily. Plus the dog is more likely to stay with us than he would be if we were standing outside the box and he wanted to come to us. So we can make sure that all the food is picked up. And if he quits early, rather than pulling out of the box, we can pick him up and carry him out of the box, wait a little bit and start again later. There are several steps. First is we are inside the box with the dog. Next step is we are outside as Nathan demonstrated with the dog. The next step is we try to pull the dog from the track. We call this proofing. We want the dog to pull against us and resist being pulled out. We would never pull him out actually, but we begin with a slight tug on the leash and the dog fighting to go back into the track. As he gets stronger and stronger with his will to not submit to the pressures of the lead, 
At that point, he is ready to begin a straight line track. And on the tra straight line track, we're going to do exactly the same thing. If he wanders off to the right, for instance, we'll pull him to the right. He'll realize that we don't know what we're doing. We're pulling the wrong way. And he will generally respond with an equal and opposite pressure, taking him back to the track. He finds food and he continues. This teaches the dog to disregard the handler when he's doing a track, which is very important as we move into advanced tracking. The tracking box is a very powerful tool. Kind of interesting that when students come out to the ranch to do tracking, when they're done and they leave, and I'm getting ready to leave myself, my dog is turned loose to go potty, and he will run to where the students had been working with their dogs and try to find pet tracking boxes. I then have to wait for him to eat all the food that was left over out of the boxes before I can leave. Very excited about it, and needless to say, he becomes a very good tracker from this sort of a beginning, and it's a very positive, motivated discipline. Thank you.